Hello and welcome to the final episode of our U-Boat Diorama build. Today we conclude our journey, a project that has not only tested our skills, but also expanded our understanding of history through scale modeling. In today's episode, we embark on the creation of an ocean diorama, utilizing styrofoam, aluminum foil, and toilet paper. This innovative approach not only demonstrates our creativity, but also highlights how everyday materials can be transformed into a stunning representation of the sea. Additionally, we'll be completing the final components of our U-boat, including the railings and cannons, and painting some figures to add life to our scene. These meticulous details are what will elevate our diorama from a simple model to a dynamic representation of history. For our grand finale, we're adding a 3D frame with LEDs to simulate a thunderstorm. This dramatic feature lights up our U-boat and ocean, casting intermittent lightning glows. The flickering LEDs not only showcase our model's details, but also create a captivating atmosphere. Blending technology with traditional modeling to bring the seas perilous beauty to life. For our first step, we mark the position of the U-boat on a pre-cut piece of styrofoam and then, by hand, crumple aluminum foil to adhere it with a hot glue gun. This process begins the foundation of our ocean's texture, allowing us to sculpt waves and ripples around the submarine's final resting place. After the crumpled aluminum foil has been glued in place, we gently massage a layer of aluminum foil, this time less crumpled, and adhere it flatly across the diorama. This step will normalize the entire surface, creating a more uniform base, while still retaining the subtle textures needed to mimic the ocean surface. 
This technique ensures a balance between the chaotic nature of the sea and the need for a level playing field on which to set our scene, paving the way for the realistic portrayal of a maritime landscape. Next, we create an adhesive mixture for the toilet paper layer, combining PVA glue with water. This concoction will serve as a flexible yet sturdy base for our ocean surface, ensuring that the toilet paper adheres smoothly over the aluminum foil. The toilet paper is now applied over the aluminum foil. Using a brush, we destroy the texture of the toilet paper so that it becomes unrecognizable. Sometimes this requires several layers. Any holes can easily be patched with more toilet paper. It's crucial that the toilet paper dries completely to prevent mold from forming. This step transforms our base into a seamless ocean canvas ready for painting and detailing, ensuring that our diorama not only captures the eye, but also withstands the test of time. After coating the surface with a black primer, we spray it with a suitable dark blue paint. This step serves to deepen the ocean's allure, creating a mysterious and vast underwater world for our U-boat. The dark base color not only adds depth, but also enhances the realism of the diorama, setting the stage for further detailing and highlights that will bring the ocean to life. Next, we mix off-white and Luftwaffe World War II colors from Vallejo with their airbrush thinner and flow improver to spray onto the raised waves. 
This technique highlights the crests of the waves, creating a contrast that suggests the play of light and shadow across the water's surface. The strategic application of these lighter tones adds dimension and movement to our ocean, making the scene more dynamic and realistic. The careful balance of colors and the use of airbrushing techniques are key to achieving the natural look of the sea under the stormy skies above. The highest part of each wave is directly sprayed with the color off-white.
After the paint has dried, Vallejo still water is applied with a brush. This creates a gloss effect, simulating the sheen of real water and providing an extra layer of protection for the paint beneath. The use of Vallejo still water not only enhances the visual depth of our ocean, but also adds a realistic touch of moisture, as if the waves are truly in motion. An acrylic texture paste, mimicking the color of the Atlantic Ocean, is dabbed onto the surface. I recommend applying two or three layers of this texture until the desired coverage is achieved. This technique introduces a tangible, tactile quality to the ocean, adding layers of depth and complexity to the water's surface. Each layer contributes to the overall realism enhancing the diorama's visual appeal and ensuring the sea appears as dynamic and varied as its real-life counterpart. The careful application of these textures brings the scene to life, inviting viewers to imagine the ebb and flow of the waves. Once again, Vallejo still water is applied. This second layer intensifies the gloss effect, adding further depth to the ocean's surface. It seals in the texture paste, ensuring the layers beneath are protected while enhancing the appearance of wetness and reflectivity. This step is vital for achieving a lifelike aquatic environment, making the ocean appear as though it is in constant motion with the light reflecting off its surface, just like the unpredictable waters of the Atlantic.
after everything has dried, a mixture of the acrylic texture paste, off-white and thinner, is applied and dabbed onto the highest points. This technique simulates the foam and froth created when waves collide, capturing the natural whitecaps seen in turbulent waters. This final detail adds a crucial element of realism, as the white highlights convey the power and movement of the sea, truly bringing the ocean to life in our diorama. Finally, it's time to place our U-boat onto the diorama. To ensure it holds securely over time, I've decided to cut some support brass pipes to length. These will be attached with epoxy glue and held in position with blue tack. This method not only guarantees the submarine remains steadfast in its stormy sea setting, but also allows for precise positioning, ensuring the U-boat is showcased in the most dramatic manner possible. The use of brass pipes adds an extra layer of durability and professionalism to our diorama, making it a centerpiece that can be admired for years to come.
the diorama is set aside for a moment as we turn our attention to the railings and rigging. Much like many parts of this kit, the railings come with some excess support plastic, which needs to be removed with sandpaper. This meticulous process ensures that every detail on our U-boat is crisp and accurate, reflecting the precision engineering of the original vessel. By carefully sanding down these small imperfections, we prepare our model for the final assembly, ensuring that it seamlessly integrates with the dynamic ocean base we've crafted. This section of the railing is even more challenging as the lower parts have been bent so severely that they must be replaced with scratch-built pieces. To seamlessly integrate the railing and scratch-built parts, sprue glue, a mixture created by dissolving plastic sprues in a solvent, is applied. This specialized filler perfectly matches the model's texture and color, rendering repairs virtually invisible after painting and preserving the diorama's meticulous detail. Next, we turn our attention to 3D printed parts from Shapeways, intended for use in the rigging, as the original kit lacks such components. Under the microscope, we observe that these parts still have remnants of support plastic, which must be carefully removed. That looks much better. Not perfect, but things often appear worse under the microscope than they do to the naked eye. This improvement underscores the meticulous nature of scale modeling, where precision is key. Yet some imperfections can be acceptable, given they're not noticeable in the overall display. It's a reminder of the balance between striving for perfection and recognizing the limits of what can be discerned at scale, ensuring our diorama retains its impressive realism and historical authenticity. Thank you.
bit of chipping is added to mimic wear, lending authenticity to the U-boat's history. This detail suggests the vessel's service challenges, enriching the diorama's story. Careful placement of these marks offers a glimpse into the past, making the model not just a display, but a narrative piece. Now, the railing can be attached and the rigging can at least be temporarily put in place. This is my first attempt at adding rigging to a model, so please be kind, it won't be perfect. For the rigging, I'm using braided lines from NEZ. This step marks a significant milestone in the project, bringing us closer to the completion of our diorama. The choice of braided lines aims to enhance the model's detail and accuracy, acknowledging the learning curve with a spirit of patience and perseverance. With that accomplished, we can turn our attention to the cannon. It is assembled in the usual manner and refined with some 3D printed parts.
After the primer was applied, the cannon was lightly sprayed with white from above, a technique intended to enhance light and shadow effects, commonly used in figure painting. Unfortunately, due to a slight mishap with the main coat, this effect is hardly noticeable. This experience underscores the delicate balance of applying techniques to achieve desired visual effects, and sometimes results may not align with our expectations. Nonetheless, it's an important part of the learning process, encouraging experimentation and adaptation in pursuit of modeling excellence. Now it's time to add some weathering to the cannon. After allowing the clear gloss varnish to dry for 24 hours, a wash is applied, which is mostly removed after about 40 minutes using the appropriate tools. This weathering step introduces a sense of age and exposure to the elements, adding depth to the cannon's appearance. A bit of grimy oil paint further helps make the object more interesting. This is applied with a Deerfoot stippler brush, dabbed and smudged primarily along the edges of the cannon. This technique adds another layer of realism, suggesting the accumulation of grime and wear over time. Focusing on the edges, where wear would naturally be most pronounced, enhances the visual depth and character of the piece, making the cannon not just a model, 
but a story of its own, marked by the trials of service at sea. Returning to our diorama, waves crashing against the boat are simulated using water foam from AK Interactive and Craft Cotton. This method creates a dynamic interaction between the U-boat and the ocean, adding realism and motion to the scene. The combination of specialized modeling materials and everyday items showcases the creativity and ingenuity involved in diorama building bringing the aquatic environment to life with a sense of energy and drama.
After completing that, we shift our focus to the figures. Border Model offers two different figure sets for this kit, the one shown here and another depicting the crew loading a torpedo, which is part of the kit but not used by me, as it's more suitable for a harbour scene. This choice highlights the versatility offered by additional sets, allowing modelers to tailor their dioramas to specific themes or moments in history. As is customary, casting lines must be removed and gaps between the arm and torso closed. This refining process is essential for ensuring the figures appear as lifelike and seamless as possible. By addressing these small imperfections, we bring out the best in each figure, allowing them to fully embody their roles within the scene and contribute significantly to the narrative and visual appeal of the model. I must admit, figure painting is not my strongest suit, as you've probably noticed. My usual approach involves priming the figure in black, then spraying from above with white to highlight light and shadow. Subsequently, the figures are painted with multiple layers of color mixed with a glaze medium. This method aims to enhance the depth and detail of the figures, using the contrast between light and dark to bring out their features. The use of glaze medium helps in creating a more nuanced and realistic appearance, allowing the underlying shades to subtly show through and contribute to a more lifelike representation. After applying nearly 10 layers of paint to the life jacket, I was reminded once again of how challenging it is to apply orange, white or red with a brush. Therefore, I decided to remove the paint to at least apply the orange with an airbrush. The paint, including the primer, can be removed using isopropyl alcohol mixed with water and an ultrasonic cleaner. Typically, the figure needs to be left in the solution for one to two days. This method efficiently strips the paint without damaging the delicate details of the figure, allowing for a fresh start and a smoother application of challenging colors with an airbrush, leading to a more vibrant and accurate finish. A toothbrush and Tamiya acrylic thinner are also useful for removing the primer. This combination allows for gentle yet effective scrubbing of the figure, ensuring that even the most stubborn layers of primer are lifted without harming the fine details.
Here I demonstrate the process of mixing the base color with glaze medium, which is then applied to the figure in three to four layers. Next, the shadows are accentuated. This is achieved by mixing the base color with a bit of black, glaze medium, and retarder medium. After application, the mixture is blended using a flat brush. This technique allows for the subtle deepening of shadows on the figure, enhancing the contrast and giving the impression of more defined lighting and depth. The addition of retarder medium slows the drying time, providing more leeway to smooth out transitions and achieve a more natural, cohesive look. Blending with a flat brush ensures a soft gradation between light and dark areas. The same process is repeated on the highest points of the figure's clothing, this time using a mix of the main color with white and the two mediums. This step highlights the raised areas enhancing the visual impact of light falling on the figure and creating a more dynamic appearance. The addition of white to the base color lightens it appropriately for these highlights, while the mediums ensure the paint remains workable and blends smoothly. This careful application of highlights and shadows brings out the intricate details of the clothing, contributing to a more lifelike and three-dimensional effect. Now that the U-boat and its figures are complete, we can focus on the 3D frame and the container for the diorama. First, a track for an LED strip is installed, which will illuminate the diorama later on. Unfortunately, I don't have the right screws for the corner connections, so nails and a hammer will have to suffice. This step is crucial for setting the stage as proper lighting not only showcases the meticulous details of our work, but also enhances the atmosphere, bringing the scene to life. The electronics can now be installed. I've purchased the components from Evan Designs, which are quite easy to handle. Here we have a speaker that emits random thunderstorm sounds. This is connected to a switch, which in turn is connected to a power source, the connections are sealed with shrink tubing, briefly heated with a heat gun. This setup not only adds auditory depth to our diorama, but also brings a dynamic element to the display, enhancing the viewer's experience. The use of Evan Designs components, known for their ease of use, ensures a smooth installation process, 
while the shrink tubing provides a neat and secure method for protecting the electrical connections, ensuring the longevity and reliability of the setup. Let's test the setup. That worked. The shrink tubes can now be heated. This step securely insulates the connections, preventing short circuits and ensuring the electronic components function reliably. By carefully applying heat, the tubes will contract to form a tight seal around the wires. Here you can see the LED lights, a total of three LED storm light circuits that blink randomly. These are led to a three-way connector, which in turn is connected to a switch and a power source. This arrangement simulates the erratic flashes of lightning in a storm, adding a dramatic and immersive effect to the diorama. The setup, designed to mimic the unpredictable nature of a thunderstorm, enhances the atmospheric tension around the U-boat scenario. By integrating these LEDs, the diorama gains a dynamic layer of realism, inviting viewers to experience not just the visual, but also the ambient aspects of a storm at sea. Next, we prepare a small piece of balsa wood to mount the switches and power sources. The cables are threaded through a hole in the lid, allowing for easy operation of the lights and sound. This setup ensures that the diorama's interactive elements are accessible and user-friendly. By organizing the electrical components in this manner, we maintain the aesthetic integrity of the display while providing a practical solution for controlling the atmospheric effects. The choice of balsa wood, known for its lightweight and easy to manipulate properties, makes it an ideal platform for housing the switches and power connections.
The speaker and lights are attached to the underside of the lid using epoxy glue and insulation tape. This method ensures a secure and durable attachment, allowing the electronic components to be neatly integrated into the diorama's framework. By positioning the speaker and lights underneath the lid, the setup remains unobtrusive, preserving the aesthetic appeal of the display while still delivering the intended audiovisual effects. The use of epoxy glue providers a strong bond for the components, and the insulation tape offers additional security and electrical insulation, ensuring the system operates safely and effectively. Above the speakers and LEDs, a wire mesh is secured just to ensure that the craft cotton, which we will shortly use to create clouds, stays in place. This measure not only protects the electronic components, but also provides a structure for the cotton to adhere to, allowing for more precise and realistic cloud formations.
And now we can test the setup before I complete the assembly off camera, as unfortunately it doesn't fit in my recording space. This trial run is crucial to ensuring that all components work harmoniously together, from the flickering LED storm lights to the thunderous sounds emanating from the speaker, all the way to the visual effect of the clouds. It's a moment of truth that brings the project to life, offering a glimpse of the immersive experience the completed diorama will provide. Testing also allows for any final adjustments to be made, ensuring that when the scene is finally assembled, it captures the dramatic essence of a storm at sea surrounding our meticulously crafted U-boat. And here is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I wish you a wonderful day. Until next time.